Hello guys, my name is Gilbert Matos and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your levels using Tiled. Tiled is an external room editor that you can use to make your game maker levels. By the end of this video, you should be able to have something like this up and running. So let me show you. This is a small demo that I made using Tiled. So this is the, the game, the game sample that comes with the project that we're going to be making. As you can see, all collisions are working just fine. So, yep, everything's working fine. And we have our own room. Everything was made in tiled. In terms of, you know, everything that was coded, it was imported into tiled. And after made, it was exported and brought back into GameMaker 1.4. So what we're going to be needing here is tiled, of course. This is the room that I made in tiled, right? As you can see here, we have different layers. We have a layer for the objects, we have a layer, for, a layer for the view, and we have a layer for the tiles. So, but let's just go and get a brand new file. So we want to make a room. So we, you can get tile from the website, which is uh, this one right here. So go download tiled. And as soon as you open tiled, you should be able to see this. So just click it where it says new map. And right here, you're, you're giving these options. So make sure that all of this matches. So it is orthogonal, CSV, left down. And then map size, just make it infinite because this is one of the greatest features that tile brings with it. When you make an infinite room, you're able to create things on the go you don't have to be limited to a, a specific size so you don't have to think about that so make sure that you know the width of your tile sets right is defined the width of your of your your tile sizes right it's going to be this so it can be whatever your tile set uses so if it is more than 32 you set it to that so for now for the project that i made is 32 by 32 we click uh, save as and we name it something else right let's say game maker project GMS 1.4, GMS 14 demo, let's call it that. Save it, and you know, the first thing that we get, we press Control G and we're given the grid. So right here, you can see all of this here, right? So you can see, this is the room, it is empty at the moment. Here, you can change the color, you go into map, map properties, and that's what you get, right? So you get background color, you can set it to whatever you want. So in this case, we're gonna set it to white. Not white, we're gonna set it to this kind of blue, which is, should be fine. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we already have a tile layer created. We're gonna import the tile set from our Game Maker Studio project file, right? So we're gonna do, we're gonna go here, new tile set, and then we're gonna go into browse. So make sure that it says based on tile set image and that it says embed in map, and then you go into browse. So you go into your folder, right? And then you look into the backgrounds. That's where you're supposed to have your background, your tile set. So my tile set is this one. So we're gonna forget about this one. We're just gonna delete it because we don't need that. But it's this one, sample tile set. You click open. And here we're gonna give all these specifications for this tile set. So. My tile set is 32 by 32, which is fine. But here we have a margin of two. If your tile set does not have these, these specifications, then don't worry about them. But for mine, for this one, this project, it has a margin of two and a spacing of four. So we set it to that because this is a buffered tile set. And we're gonna talk about that later on. But for now, these this are just you know, the mere requirements. If yours does not have, if your tile set is just normal, it's not buffered, then don't worry about it. Just leave it at zero. And we click OK. So, so far we have our tile set. This is great. So now we're going to turn that tile set into a terrain. So we go down here where it says tile sets. There's an option here, little wrench, wrench that says edit tile set. We go here, click it. And this is the tile set, right? Which is fine. It's great. So before anything else, we have to make sure that we are on the right thing. So it says terrains, we click here, the right option. So we click terrain, 
and we go here on this plus sign it says add terrain type click on that but before you click on that select one of these you, ha you have to select one of the images if you want now you don't need to so just click on the plus and it adds a new terrain you can name the terrain and say you know demo tile set it could be whatever you want okay you click on that great now that you have a new that you have created a terrain you have to make sure that you mark this right so here this is how we make a terrain go like this and make sure that we have this type of shape so my tile sets are 32 by 32 right but you know they're not entirely they're not um the entire the entire uh square so this should be this one right here is like 16 by 16 but it is inside a 32 by 32 square which is fine so this is the way i make the style sets to make them work in tiled so that is one so then you choose this image right here right make sure that that is not selected if you mess up like that you go here and you clean it and that should be it so when you save it Control s save it close this and now you have your tile set ready so now in order for you to use the terrain you go where it says terrains click on that and now you should be able if you click if you press Control g you see it is infinite so you can zoom in zoom out and we're going to be zooming in a little bit so let's say that we want to create a room right so if you if you hold click if you hold shift and you left click and you drag without you know having to hold down the left click the left button you know you can just hold that with the middle button right there you can just create your room so so far you're creating you're you're placing the tiles which is just fine right so you're placing your tiles and these auto maps this I'm sorry this auto tiles right there which is great it's a lot faster than working you know with the terrible room editor in game maker 1.4 so you know, we're making our levels everything is you know going fine it's great we're gonna if you if you press and hold control you can make the tile a little smaller so you know you have a little more variety which is great them hurts right here you know and you have little things like this so let's say that you know you're happy you already made your tile the tile set that you wanted and now you want to export it right so before we do anything like that right we're just gonna make sure that we know how to make objects let's say that you want to add objects so now that we have imported our tile set we should be able to import objects so in order for you to import your objects from your projects you have to make sure that you go where it says tile sets you click here which says new tile set and then you go and look for not the background images this is gonna be a little different you go where it says sprites so in sprites you choose the image that you want in this case let's choose the solid object right for a program for that's that's our solid object and because we have it's not a it's not a tile set and it, it's not buffered we're going to leave it as zero that's the size of the tile set right so now we have a new tile set but now we need to edit this tile set in order for game maker to be able to recognize this so you go where it says edit the same thing edit tile set but you click on it right you go here and you click on it so you choose this option which says style collision editor so you, you just choose it right choose that and then where it says type this is the good part you're gonna put the name of the object as it appears inside of your project inside of your game maker project so you're gonna go in my case is O solid just like that and you know press enter and you're good to go so you save it you go back into the main editing area and when you look at it, it you say you make sure that it says type solid right here make sure that you have that here because when you don't do it right it does not get saved and it's because you didn't select the tile set first when we were in this room in this window and went back to this so now that it's saved right we have to create 
an object layer. So we go here, new object layer, and we'd say, you know, you can you can call this objects, which is fine. So you you have your tile set, great, and now you go here, where it says insert tile. And once you click on that, you can insert that kind of tile, right? And it's gonna it's gonna follow the grid, which is great. It is great, right? It is amazing. But you know, since our tile sets are different, you remember what I told you before, right? I told you that the tile sets, even though they are 32 by 32, their size is, you know, in width, sometimes they can be uh, you know, 32 by 32. They're gonna be 32 by 32 at some points. But in height, they're gonna be half of that, which is gonna be 16. So here, you wanna be able to resize that um, this object, right, the solid object, to match that just fine. So in order for us to select the object, we don't click on it like this, no, because we're gonna be making another object right on top of it every time we do that. So what we do is we go here, where it says, or where it says select object, which is S as a shortcut. So, you know, select object, and now that we have been able to select the object, you can do a couple of things. If you click on it again after selecting it, you're going to get this, which is, you know, you can rotate it. But, you know, don't do that. Don't worry about that for now. So, but you can stretch. You can stretch. Make sure, you know, make the tile bigger, which is great. It's an awesome way of working with this. You can work things fairly fast with this. You know, that's pretty much it. But, yeah, you select this. Now, here's the other portion. We have to make sure that we disable snap snapping into the grid right if we want to be able to uh for, you know align the uh, the solid object to the tile sets right the tiles place in room in the room right which is fine so if you don't want to be clicking here and over there you can just you know click on the object copy paste it you know and you can paste it a bunch of times where you want them so I'm gonna be needing one here. I'm gonna be needing one there. I'm gonna be needing another one for this one. Here and here. So as you can see, all objects, all instances are marked as the you know type solid, which is great. So you don't have to do this again. You know, we have this and this one here. We've got another one for this, another one for this, another one for this, another one for this, another one for this. So you can see here. It's fine, but here's where the magic starts, right? You ready? So we're gonna go back to where it says we're gonna go into map. Uh, no, we're gonna go into into view, and where it says snapping, you're you're gonna turn this off. You can make it snap to pixels, which is fine. It's great because this way you can edit this the way you want. So you know snap to pixels which is great so you can just zoom out you know click and drag same thing here which is great you know, you're gonna click and drag and right now I'm just gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to watch any of this and we can get back to into the tutorial so I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds all right guys so now that we're done just mapping out you know the collisions for a room then I think we're ready to move on so next we're gonna import the player object in order for us to do to do that then uh, all we have to do is the same thing with it with the solid object we're gonna go into tile sets new tile set go and browse and go back to where you have your sprites so this is the player so we click on that and we do the same thing with the front player it's 32 by 32 in this case right and we say okay we're gonna edit the player done it edit and then we go here again we select it remember name of the player which is type right type is um the name of the player so O player enter and we're good to go now we save we go back again we can close this if you want and you know you can just click on that here remember you have to click on insert tile and you have to make sure that you're in the right layer so you go here and you can just click and that's where the player is gonna be remember we press S just to select move them around you know you can leave them there he's perfectly 
you know, please. And you can tell that we did everything right because it says O oh, player, object player, which is fine. So great. So we have pretty much the basics of everything down packed. We're great, right? So we have the player, we have the tile set uh, in place, and we have the solid objects all laid out. Now, what we want to do is we want to set up the view, the viewport, the room speed of the, the entire thing, and we want to set up the background color, and also we need to clear the background with a color, because if you don't do that, then you're going to have shadows of the same object which is the player object moving around and everything else is going to look really really messed up and i'll show you what i mean by this in a few minutes in a few seconds i'm sorry so we're going to make the view so in tile entitled the way you make the view is you you can you can make it in the same layer but you know for organization for organization purposes we're going to make it in a new object layer and we're going to call this the view right so we go here where it says insert rectangle. We click on that, and then we're gonna make a rectangle the same size of the view of, of the, the map, right? Which is gonna be here. So we click here. It should be good. Hold on. Before we do that, we're gonna turn snapping back on to make everything easier. So we're gonna go into view, snapping, snap to grid, which is fine. So here we're gonna click here. Oof. See, a lot easier. So click here, make it bigger. We press S to resize it, not to our liking, which is fine. We'll make it a little bigger, tiny bit bigger. And I think that's pretty much it. So that's gonna be our view. So it says view, right? But now we have to remember, you have to remember that you have to make, to call this, you know, what you want it to be. So this is the object and we're gonna call it view. This is the type, view. Okay, great. So we called it view and now we need to set up a bunch of things, right? A bunch of custom properties in order for this to work, right? So custom properties are the properties that are, that are used by a game maker, in this case, that rooms actually have. So if we go back into the documentation for a tile, right? It says views. Views can be defined using rectangle, rectangle objects where the type has been set to view. The position and size will be snapped to pixels. Whether the view is visible when the room starts depends on whether the object is visible. The use of views is automatically enabled when any views are defined, which is fine, right? So these are the following properties. So this is the export, right? And it's set to default zero, uh, export, you know, Y export, and but this is what matters. W port is the width port and the H port, right? Which is great. So that's is that that's what we're gonna be needing. So that is what we're gonna be modifying right now. These are the things that we're gonna be creating. So it's gonna be W port and H port. So it's gonna be the same size as room. So we go back into tiled, we create them, right? We call them uh we call this an int because it's an integer so you're going to be dealing with numbers when it's numbers like this it's just going to be when it's numbers without decimal point without decimal values it's going to be called an integer int in this case so we have h port we have uh, w port and we press enter and then we're going to have h port and then we're going to have press enter again and here we're going to decide the, the the size of it, right? So it says width and height. The width, we're going to call that uh, 15, 36, which is fine. That's, I'm sorry, that's the height. We're going to call that, I mean, we're going to add that. And here it's going to be uh, 1,024. And that's going to be it. We'll press enter. And that should be good to go, I believe. So that is for that. Uh, speed, it's the the other, you know, custom property that we're gonna add. So we're gonna call this speed, and it's gonna be an integer as well. And it's gonna be 60. So that's the room speed, which is great. You know, for now, you know, you should save your project right now. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna go back into this, we're gonna look 
again into this so for now I don't need any of this but you guys can you know come and check this out and change things so if your room is percent persistent you make a custom property and make sure that persistent is the name of it it's by, by default it's set to false and here's the, the other part that we needed to um, pay attention to it says clear display buffer right which is you know default to true uh, the other part that we're gonna be looking for here is this we have uh, this is for objects we have code and that's the, the creation code for the instance origin origin and all of that but when it comes to view enable the use of views clear background with color with window color and those are the things that we that we need to pay attention to those are the things that we're going to be needing so clear display buffer and clear view background are the the other no this is the one we're going to be needing because this is the one that's the um, it is false by default and we're going to come here back to tiled and we're going to make another custom property we set it up and we set it to a bool right it's a boolean so we set this we set it to true so we tick it so clear view background which is fine it is true and then we look for the other one which is so I'll clear display buffer I think um, it's fine like this it is you know by default set to true but let's let's add it clear display buffer so that's the other one so we can add that right here and again you know it is a boolean click OK we just take it okay so this is pretty much it I think we are more we're more than ready to actually explore the room without having any problems so one of the first things this one of the first things that we do is you know we press control G because we want to see our grid so as you can see it's still in infinite mode right but we go we're gonna go back here which says map map properties which is fine infinite we're gonna take that off we're gonna remove that and now it looks like this so this would be the size of our room but we don't want that right no we don't so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back again where it says map and now we're gonna go we're gonna make sure that you know we click on map and why doesn't it, it doesn't select anything okay guys so the thing that we needed to do was we just needed to select the tile layer and after that you know would you go into map properties you know you untick this this is the part that says uh, infinite because if you come here it's not gonna be available auto crop is not gonna be available so we're gonna do this you untick that uncheck that and you go into auto crop and the magic happens so there you go so you have your room set up automatically so it looks beautiful now, if you want to make some, you know, additional changes, because as you can see, uh, the borders of the room, the room is not going to be as big as the tile sets, right? It's going to be a little bit bigger, but which is fine. You know, you just go back into your tile sets, you choose your tiles, and you make sure, you know, that while well, you hold shift, click and drag like this, you know, and you just keep on dragging after you let go. And now you have your the entire room completed. So nothing looks, you know, bad. And everything looks beautiful so far great so now we're gonna be exporting okay so we want to see how our map looks right so we're gonna look at it without this objects without the view and without this and we're gonna click on this and you know it looks beautiful it looks great okay I like it I like what I'm seeing so make sure that you 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 know you turn this on and we're gonna go back and we're gonna export this so you go to file export as and then it's gonna you know give you this option I don't have I already have it by default but you can see here that it has this other options which is great so but you're gonna choose game maker room files and then you're gonna make you know you're gonna put the name of it in this case is you know GMS 14 which is GMS 1.4 demo and we save that right cool so we save it we save it in the room 
you have to make sure that you save it in the room folder. So we go back, I completely forgot about that, we shouldn't have, uh, export as, and then you, know, you choose where your game is at, right? And then you go where it says rooms, and you save it, you know, save it here, save. If you already have it, don't worry about it, it's just yes. Which is fine, so we already exported the entire thing. Now we go back into Game Maker and check what happened. So since we don't have this, we don't have to worry about anything else. So you go here, where it says Rooms, you right click on Rooms, and where it says Add Existing Room, you click on that, and you choose to bring in the room that you have just made. Double click on it, bring it from the front, and we can go into the room itself and see if everything that we want it's there so the little the, you know there might be a couple of things that might be a little off and the first one that you're gonna notice is that sadly uh, it did not keep the speed it did keep the you know the width of the room which is fine and the views enable the user clear background with window color so this is great this is what we need and let me see what else you have to check check on that yeah everything all the specs are just fine so the only thing that is a little amiss here is just the player, which is a little outside of it, outside of everything. But everything looks fine. So background, real background color. You know, you change the background color to whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna set it to that purple. And after that, you know. So let me see something. It says speed is 30. Now, we're gonna go back and we're gonna see what what happened. So map properties, and we say. We did not set the speed. We, we, we did not set the, the custom properties. What? Oh, there's not, the custom properties did not get saved. And that is why you have to be very careful. So, you know, this is the map. So we go, we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing, right? We're gonna set speed, you know, which is an, an integer. We're gonna click okay. We're gonna call it 60. So we already have everything ready. Everything is ready. So, but for some reason, these properties did not save. Properties did not save at all, which is very sad because you don't want to be doing this. But now in order for you, for, for me to show you that it works, I'm going to export this, right? And again, we're going to be moving the player here because the player, for some reason, it's not, oops, the player is not showing well. So we're going to lock this so we don't move anything else. We're going to, we're going to move the player here. Just fine. So we go back, map, map properties, and we have speed set to 60. We're gonna export this again. Save, you'll save the file first. You're gonna export. Export as, same name of the room. You press yes. Of course, you're gonna get a little error message in Game Maker, which is fine. There's no problem. You know, you go here, you press okay. It was 30, right? But here we just gotta delete delete this. Gotta go back to this, you know, add from ex add existing room, and we just add it again. And now we can double check if the speed and the speed is 60. So it was fixed, and that's exactly what we needed. That's what we wanted, right? But now we want to be able to do everything that I have done, which was, uh, which were these properties, right? So you have clear display buffer. Yes, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do it in tiled. So we add another one. It was set to bull and within you know by default. We add it yes. Uh, we'll add another one, which is this second one, which is clear background. Background. Right? We go back again, we add another one. Here. Again, it's boolean, which is great. The ticket and the other thing that we need is gonna be what we already had and that is the part where we talk about the W port and the H port which should be fine so we come back here the tiled and soon and you know, just add this part here it is W port it's gonna be an integer, and we add the H board. It's gonna be another. It is H board, H board. There you go, and we're good to go. 
So again, we just take a look at the, at the size of the map. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, this is not what we needed. I'm, I'm sorry. This is exactly this is this is what we needed. So it is fine. So we didn't need the the W port because that's that's regarding the view. So I made I made a mistake again. So this is fine. So this is what we needed. So now we're gonna be exporting this. Export as. Again, we save it. We don't worry about this. We're gonna get the error either ways. You know, we just delete the room from here, and we just bring it back in, and that's it. Now this should work just fine. Amazing, great. So we go into views. Clear background buffer. Everything's looking fine. Everything's looking fine. So draw background color. Set it to you know, whatever color we want it. In this case, we can set it to something darker. Like this. Okay. And we click OK, which is fine. And now we run the game and see if it works. And it works. It works like a charm. You can see we're moving around, we're jumping. Got some coyote time right there. And you know, everything looks awesome, it looks great. So this is the way you can make and export rooms to be imported into Game Maker Studio 1.4. So if you guys like this video, let me know. I truly apologize for all the inconveniences that I faced while you know making this video. If you like what you're seeing, let me know. But this is the way you can make your own rooms using Tiled in order to make Game Maker levels. This is a lot better, a lot faster than using Game Maker itself and its terrible room editor in order for you to make your own levels. And yeah, thanks a lot guys for watching. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for the you know this project. I'm also gonna leave other links, you know, to the Tiled website. And another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, your tile sets. So this tile set, at the beginning, I said that the tile set was buffered. And what I mean by buffered is that this tile set started like this. So you have this tile set, which is fine. This is the same one as the same as the other one, but there's a difference. This is buffered. This one is not buffered. What do I mean by buffered? Look at this one. So you can see it has uh, some differences. This other one is smaller. It just has some extra pixels around the edges and in between each one of the tiles. So that when Game Maker, you know, is resizing the tile sets depending on the resolution, right? If you make the tiles the tile set in game uh, bigger and the, the tile set is not buffered, you're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of issues. You're gonna have some uh, artifacts showing in your game where there's none. So it's gonna look like you know the tile sets are breaking in between if it is not buffered if it, if it is just like this it's gonna give you trouble it's gonna give you a lot of trouble and you don't want that so you want to be able to you know buffer your tile sets just like this and that's exactly what I did that's what I, that's why when I added it into tiled I had to add those you know little little extra details and what do we use for that we use tile set champion which is made by this awesome guy called Jeffrey Seaman. This guy is a god. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this um, this tool. You know, it's very, it's, it's very much appreciated. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, my tile is 32 by 32. I just put 0, 0, 0, 0, and I just leave left it at, you know, 2. And this generated, you know, the buffer tile set, which is, you know, horizontal offset is 2, vertical offset is 2, and horizontal separation is 4, and vertical separation is 4 as well. So in tile, you know, you just have the margin and the other thing, and that's pretty much it. You know? So you just uh, pay attention to that. So once you do that and you bring that into Game Maker, right? When you come back here in, ba in the background section, it's going to ask you for this same thing. So you got 32, 32, and then you have to click on here where it says use as tile set, and you know, you just put the details that you know the tile set champion gave you, which is you know horizontal offset two and two. And then the you know the separation is four and four, which is great. But that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I hope you find this video 
you know you found this video uh, useful if you uh, useful you know if you would like to know more about this just let me know in the comments and I'm you know I'm gonna make sure to cover you know any topics and answer any questions that you might have about this well but that's pretty much it as you can see the demo is you know up and running just fine it's working and it's gonna be in the description in a link so you guys can download it and play around with it and yeah that's pretty much it so if you have any other questions uh, I think that's pretty much it but you know just leave them in the comments below and yeah that's pretty much it my name is Gilbert Matos and thanks a lot for watching